Good morning. My name is Laura Witten, and um, I grew up in the church from day one. My dad was a minister, and my mom was a piano teacher slash choir teacher slash great lover of all things Ellen White. Um, and uh, I believe that what the church needs more of is transparency. Um, I was diagnosed bipolar when I was 18 years old. I was here on campus and I started crying one night and I looked in Lamson Hall. You guys know how it's like a big square. And I was crying in this corner and there's a courtyard of empty space in the middle and the RA from that corner had to come help me calm down because I was that loud. And um, I, I was admitted to St. Joseph to the behavioral medicines unit, which means the crazy wing. And, um, and it, was, it was an insane ride. I refused the medication, so 35 of my closest friends, family, and teachers came to testify against me in court and say that I had been acting strange. And um, I remember when this whole debacle was beginning to calm down and I was ready to take medication. And um, I remember my mom, who was so worried for me, my parents say this was one of the hardest times in their, in, in their lives. And my mom said, listen, Laura, never tell anyone that you've been to therapy or that you've been hospitalized because you'll never get a job or be trusted ever again. And um, I just said to myself, this, this is not the way I'm going to live. I'm going to have to tell the truth about who I am or nobody's going to get it. If, you don't, if I don't tell the truth about who I am and I make a new friend, and three weeks later I disappear off the face of the earth because I'm in my bed crying for a week, what are they going to think? I know what they're going to think. <laughs> they're going to think I hate them or I've given up on them or they've offended me somehow. And um, so I decided to take the opposite track. When I would do an interview for a job, I would say, I want you to know that I was diagnosed bipolar. I take medication every day. I see a therapist twice a week. And I'm doing everything I can to stay well. And guess what kept happening? People kept hiring me. It's so weird. And um, every time I tell my story, people come up afterwards and say, thank you for telling your story. I thought I had to keep mine a secret, and I don't know how to get help. And um, I think the church is afraid. We're afraid to offend people. We're afraid to alienate people. We're afraid in a lot of ways. But the good news is that God has come to take away our shame and our fear. Perfect love casts out fear. So you don't need to be afraid to be yourself here. You don't need to be afraid to tell your story honestly. Because what's going to happen is the people around you are going to respond by loving you more and drawing you closer and choosing to show up for you and help you get well. So um, I do believe that the church needs more transparency and I'm grateful for places like the One Place and Calvary Road and Niles. And there are little pockets that are beginning to fight back the fear and say, no, we're going to be ourselves. Um, so today, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to, you know, we're supposed to have two words. Um, so the one that the church, I think, needs more of is transparency. Um, and the one that I think the church gave me, the way the church saved me, is they, always, they gave me a platform. They gave me somewhere to tell my story. They gave me somewhere to sing my songs. Um, and uh, it was in the church, in church schools, that I learned how to play and sing, which is now my full-time career. I'm a singer-songwriter. Um, I think they were going to put a slide up with my name on it. I would love it if you guys would friend me on Facebook. And if you have any questions about any of what I've talked about today, I am not famous enough to not write you back. So I've got lots of time, and I will write you back. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to write a song. I'm going to need your help. So the first thing I want to know is what has the church given you? If you can give me one word or one phrase, I want you to just yell it out, and then we're going to do democratic song writing. So for me, it was a platform. What is the church giving you? Just love. love. Good. That's one. We're going to get three words, and then we're going to vote it down. Who else? Hope. Hope. Good. Uh, one more. What, is, what was that? Purpose. Purpose. Love it. Okay, so what we're going to do now, um, what we're doing, by the way, is we're going to write a song together about this. Um, and it, it always takes, it takes inspiration to write a song. So the first thing you do when you write a song is you find something that inspires you. 
So we're going to vote together, very democratic songwriting here. Which inspires you most as something that the church has given you, a way in which the church has served you? Is it hope, love, or purpose? Ready? So I'm going to say hope, and you raise your hands. Ready? How do you feel like the thing the church has most served them with is hope? Okay. Hold, hold your hands up. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, good. Okay, about 13. Okay, how many people feel like what the church has really given them is love? Okay, let's see this. Okay, all right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, not so many. Okay, um, how many people feel like the main thing that the church has given them is purpose? Let's see. Oh, that wins. Okay, so we're going to write a song about purpose. So my buddy Emily down here is going to be our um, our uh, thingy uh, secretary. Thank you. You're our, you're our thingy, Emily. We love you for it. Um, okay, so the next thing you need when you're writing a song, some people write their lyrics first, and some people write lyrics with their piano or guitar or banjo or whatever. So if you don't play an instrument, you just find a friend who does, and you pick out three chords, because all of pop music is only three chords. Okay, um, so give me a chord. Just, just raise your hand and give me a letter. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You can put a sharp, flat, or a minor, but it might be harder to play. G. But raise your hand, because there's too many people saying all ones. G. Yes. G. G, okay. All right, next. D, let's try that. Good, next. A, okay, let's try that. Um, I think we can do that. Okay, so then what you do is, we've got, okay, so right real big at the top, G, D, A. Good, so the next thing you do is you think, what about this matters, and you want to, again, this is, I'm all about transparency, you want to, if you tell your story honestly, people will relate. So now I need a phrase that says, the reason why I feel like church gave me purpose is, uh, you know, I would feel lost without whatever, okay? So you just say a phrase. There are no wrong answers, and we're just going to take about three phrases, and then we're going to start writing. Who has a phrase? Well, I feel like, because about like 23 of you raised your hands, so let's back this up now. Well, the church gave me purpose by doing this thing, or it means that to me because of this. Who's got one? This. Gave me a place to serve. It gave me a place to serve. I love it. What else? Tells me why I'm here. Tells me why I'm here. Like why I'm, I'm existing. Right. Love it. One more. Gets me outside of myself. Gets me outside of myself. Yes, that's such a... Okay, for someone like me who deals with brain circular issues, to be able to serve stops the I hate myself cycle. It's, it's kind of miraculous. Okay. All right. So, Emily, I'm going to need that page. And then you come. Can you, like, pull up a chair and come right next to me? Or you can stand by me or whatever you want to do. Stand by with me. Okay. Um, all right. So, the next thing you do is you are the person who plays the instrument. You play your, you play your phrase over and over again. And you hum along until it sounds good. And this is the point where my dad always gets really nervous when he's in the audience. Oh, I told it not to give up on him. Okay, all right, um, okay, here we go.